Castle Workspaces is a container streaming platform used to stream containerized desktops and apps to your browser. While Casa maintains a number of open source workspace images, you'll likely want to create your own images with specific software and configurations built into them. In addition to the full desktop and app images, Casm also publishes core images, which have the bare minimum software needed to work within the Casm Workspaces platform. These core images are intended to be used as base images. The benefit of Casm Workspaces over a traditional terminal server or BDI solution is the modern DevOps approach, or as some would say, desktop as a code. This video will focus on creating a custom desktop image within a Git project in GitLab and using it within a Chasm Workspaces deployment. Be sure to catch our next video where we'll cover how to create a CI pipeline for the same project to make sure our image is continually built and pulled down by Chasm Workspaces. First, I'm going to install Chasm Workspaces on a brand new Ubuntu 20 VM. We have other videos that cover the install, so I will walk through it rather quickly. First, I will copy the download link. Next, I will run wget and paste in the link. Untar the downloaded file. I'll run the installation with the option to skip loading all the default workspaces images. That will speed up the install, and we will be creating our own image anyway. Accept the license agreement. The installation script will install Docker and Docker Compose if they're not already installed. Then it'll pull down all the necessary images. Accept the warning about there being no swap partition if you get it. Though in production, you'll want to make sure you have a swap partition or swap file. After it is complete, I'm going to save the randomly generated credits to a file. The installation creates a self-signed cert, so you'll have to accept the warning. You can always create a publicly signed cert so that your users don't get that warning. Then log in as the default admin user and change the password. Here you can see there are no workspace images loaded and Chasm is ready for us to create the custom image. The first step in creating a custom image is deciding which core image to base from. Chasm maintains Ubuntu, CentOS, Remnux, and Kali Linux core images. I'm on Docker Hub here and I've searched for Chasm core. We will base from the Ubuntu Bionic core image. The next step is to determining which tag to use. The version number of the base image must match the version number of workspaces that you have deployed. Since I've deployed Chasm Workspaces 1.10.0, I must use a 1.10.0 image. There are two versions of that tag, however, one with and one without the rolling. The non-rolling version is built and published at the time of the release of that version. As you can see, 1.10 was pushed about a month ago. The rolling version of each image is built nightly. For security reasons, it is recommended to build from the rolling tag. This ensures your derived images are always up to date. Each time you rebuild your image, it will pull the latest core image, ensuring you always have the latest security patches. If, however, reliability is of utmost importance, the non-rolling tag images will never change, ensuring your builds are always the same. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a custom image based on the Chasm Maintain Core Ubuntu Bionic with the 110 tag. Our open source workspace images project in GitHub already has a number of example images to include a full desktop loaded with software. The project includes scripts that make it easy to install common software. For this demonstration, I'll be making a desktop geared towards video editing. We will want to leverage some of the scripts available in the open source project to install common software like Chrome and VLC, but we'll have to figure out how to automate the install of the video editing software called Shotcut on our own. I'll start by creating a new project in GitLab within our organization's public group. You will find a link to this new project in the video's description. Let's go ahead and initialize the project with a readme file and create. Now I will clone that project to my VM. Let's have a look at the Chasm Workspaces documentation 
How-To Guide for Building Custom Images. I'm going to create a file called Dockerfile and copy the contents of the example into that file. Let's delete the lines that create an empty file. All of our customizations will go between these two comments here. We'll start with adding Chrome and VLC, since we already have examples of them in the Chasm Workspaces Images open source project. We won't look at the Chrome Docker file here, because it's a single app image, meaning there's no desktop, just Chrome. Instead, we'll look at the Docker file Chasm Ubuntu Bionic Desktop, which is a full desktop with lots of software pre-installed. Let's open that Docker file and copy the three lines that install Google Chrome and paste them into our Docker file. Note that the copy line copies files from this location into the image. Let's see what's there. There are two script files, one to install and then a custom startup. The custom startup script is only relevant to running Chrome in a single app without a desktop. We just need to copy the install Chrome script into the folder of our project at the same location. So I'll create the directory structure in my project and then use my favorite CLI text editor to create the install script. I'll use GitHub's handy copy raw file contents button and then paste that in. Now I can save and exit the text editor. Next we'll install the VLC media player. Make sure to use the dash Y option when you do an apt get install. Next let's look at the shortcut download page. We'll use the tar method of installation. It's important to note that application snaps cannot be used within Chasm Desktop because snaps are containers in and of themselves. Most applications provide a Debian package, tar file, or as a last resort you can build from source. Let's copy the link for the tar download and download it to the temp directory on the VM to see what's in it. I will untar it to my slash op directory. Now let's see what's in the shortcut folder. Inside that we have a desktop shortcut and a directory that contains the application. We will make a directory within our project for shortcut, copy the desktop shortcuts into that new location, and then edit the file there. We need to modify the desktop shortcuts execute statement because it assumes a relative path. We will change it to a fully qualified path so that we can place it directly on the desktop. We likely could use a symlink, but I want to show how you can manage files in your project and copy them into your container. You might use this for configuration management, for example. Finally, we will edit our Docker file with the installation procedures. A comment, a line to copy in the relevant files, and a run directive to do a wget to download the tar file and extract it to the op location. And we'll change the working directory to temp. Now we're ready to build. The build was successful, so now we will log back into Chasm Workspaces and create an image. Paste in the image name and fill in the appropriate fields.
we will leave our Docker registry details blank for now. We will have another video where we'll walk through setting up a CI pipeline to automatically build the image on a schedule, push it to a Docker registry, and then configure Chasm to automatically pull the updated images. Now that the image is created in Chasm, you will see a warning symbol on the image and we can't launch it yet. We'll have to wait for the agent component of Chasm to report that it has the Docker image available. The agent checks in every 30 seconds. Looks like we need a few more seconds. Okay. The agent now reports that it has the image. Let's launch and see what happens. The desktop works, but it looks like we have an issue. Looks like there's an extra quote mark in our shortcut. Indeed, there it is. I fixed it manually. Let's see if it launches now. Looks like we have a permissions issue. We'll need to mark it executable. And after that, it launches. Now we just need to go back and fix our source code and rebuild. We'll remove the extra quote mark from the desktop shortcut. Now rebuild the image. And let's try again. And now it's working as expected. And to test it out, let's upload a video file. This is the video I wanted. Let's add it to our project. And then I can drag it into the timeline. We now have a working custom image. We will commit the changes in our GitLab repo we've created in the video. Look for a link to that project in the video's description. In our next video, we will be modifying the project with a GitLab pipeline to automatically build the image on a schedule. And we'll configure workspaces to automatically pull updates and start using the new image.